I, I got involved with the League um, back in 1990. Um, I was working for the state of Indiana for vocational rehabilitation. I was supervising uh, vocational rehabilitation counselors in four counties. Um, and I had a, a staff member, a, a counselor, tell me that I didn't belong there anymore and that I should be looking for something else. Um, and uh, she, she, I think, was concerned about uh, some of the limits that you have when you work for state government. Uh, but the League was a Center for Independent Living. Uh, it was in trouble at the time. Uh, it served only people who were blind. It was then called the Allen County League for the Blind, and it had become a, a country club board and kind of a, an organization that lost touch with the people it served. Uh, it was a center for independent living, but back then the regulations were such that uh, you could technically serve one population. The law back at that time said that you had to serve people with a variety of disabilities, and the argument was, well, 75% of people who are blind have other disabilities, therefore we serve people with a variety of disabilities. It was a, a loophole that a lot of centers, single disability centers, use back in the 80s. Back in the, uh, back in the 90s, early 90s, um, if we go back even to the late 80s, uh, uh, the center then, Ursul, now accessibility. Uh, that, didn't, that didn't exist in the 80s up until the late 80s and, and um, they started as a program of United Cerebral Palsy in the late 80s. So even then they weren't a, they weren't a center for independent living. I think it was 88, 89, something like that when they separated and became a center. So in the very early days we had two centers in this state. Uh, we had then Ursul in 1990, uh, a fairly new center, and we had uh, the League then, the Allen, still the Allen County League for the Blind at that time, still a, a center serving one population for the most part. So we had, we had almost no centers in Indiana. We certainly didn't have a network, and we certainly weren't evolved as a network to the point of, of embracing uh, the philosophy of the disability rights movement and the philosophy of the independent living movement. Um, we, were, we were committed, we, we, we knew where we needed to go, and we knew we weren't there. I guess that's how I would characterize the, the early days in Indiana. Um, we had virtually no political support, uh, which is is needed uh, in our, in our, at least in the Centers for Independent Living movement. Um, it was universally understood that if you're a Center for Independent Living, you had to have group homes, which is, of course, absolutely not true. And in fact, if you do, you can't be a Center for Independent Living. Um, so very, very isolated, um, very much in its infancy. Uh, we were, Indiana was a, um, uh, a stepchild, almost a stepchild of the national independent living movement. We were so small, we were so new. Um, states around us like Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Ohio, these were all states in the Midwest, part of our region, Region 5 at the time, uh, that were very evolved uh, compared to us. And, and if I had to look at it from a perspective of people in Illinois or Wisconsin, I would have probably looked at Indiana almost with a sense of pity. Um, that's where we were. Um, so the early days, you had a lot of good hearts and good attention people. Uh, you had people coming out of a lot of the great social movements in the 60s and 70s that had come into this movement. Um, maybe they weren't people with disabilities, but they understood the need for social change. Um, and, and you had people that wanted to see things change. We were a very patriarchal uh, uh, state and society when it came down to people with disabilities. Uh, we were very much into the rehab model and the medical model uh, of uh, people with disabilities. We're here to take care of them. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, and independent living was coming out with a voice that was saying, yeah, we don't think that's quite right. Uh, that's not how, how it works. Uh, so that's where we started, and, and it, 
It was literally, and keep in mind that the League got its first Centers for Independent Living money 10 years before that, nine years before that, and had functioned as this single disability organization under basically under the federal rules that it was allowed to. It shouldn't have been allowed to, uh, but it did. The, the truth about new executive directors is this. We only know how to do two things, move stuff and clean stuff. That's all we know for the most part when we start. And that's what I was doing when I got there. We were moving stuff and cleaning stuff. Um, and in the basement of the facility we were in, we found a box of original documents, original newspaper documents. We found um, old histories of the organization. And in that box, um, some of our history that we had forgotten, the League's founders had brought Helen Keller to Fort Wayne in October of 1949 to challenge the community to start that organization, to start then the Allen County League for the Blind. And after that challenge, one year later, uh, the League incorporated, and then the year after that got its nonprofit status. But we had no idea that our founders had brought Helen Keller uh, to Fort Wayne uh, to do that. We had lost that part of our history. But we found all the original newspaper bulletins, the original follow-up articles, uh, all that information was in that box. And they weren't copies. Of course, they weren't making copies back then. Uh, these were the original documents. Uh, so since then, we've, we've preserved those. Uh, we had a history uh, with Community Chest, now United Way, that we didn't know about. We found that in that box. I mean, we just found a ton of things that we started in the, uh, in the 90s, working with uh, kids with disabilities and getting them included in, in summer camps for all people with disabilities, all, all people, uh, neighborhood kids, kids without disabilities, this, this getting kids included in these kids programs. Uh, we thought we were cutting edge. Uh, when we pulled that box of stuff out, they were doing that in the 50s at the league uh, with, with kids who were blind. Uh, that stuff wasn't new at all. I mean, I mean, that stuff was 30 years old. We just forgot that we did it. Thank you.